Let's do a little fader effects theory 101. Originally, you have limited controls on the VCI-100. So, fader effects, which is turned on up here, allows you to use the input fader, the jog wheel, and the pitch fader to control effects. These are big, very tactile controls which allow you to really get in there. The fader effects theory states that these particular controls should always be associated with different types of effects. So, in Tractor Pro, you've got three effects slots. Instead of looking at these as three separate slots, let's look at them as a group, which independently or together can make unique sounds. So I've selected these groups in terms of how these effects interact. In one instance, you've got your typical echo. Now a complementary effect to an echo is a filter LFO. And then one thing that always sounds good no matter what you're using with it is the masher. So each of these effects can be used independently, together, or all together to really manipulate a song. Now, you can have control over them independently or together as well. How does that work? Well, you always have control over the masher with two basic things. The jog wheel and the pitch fader. Pitch fader controls length or how long of a sample. You can almost think of the masher as a sampler. This is your sampler. Grabbing the wheel will turn the sample on and grab that point of a song and moving it back and forth will blend that sample from zero to 100%. Now, let's say you're sampling a part of a song but you'd like to make the sample more interesting. You might want to consider kicking an echo in. This is always controlled by the second knob which is labeled speed. Let's say that your echo is sounding interesting but you'd like to filter it out and add even some more crazy stuff. This is always controlled by the knob next to it which is labeled wet dry. This knob does control wet dry from 0 to 100 percent but it's a smart knob and from 50 to 100 percent it kicks in the filter allowing you to turn up one effect and then kick another one in for extra control. Let's say you want to mess with the filter even more. If you're in fader effects mode and all of your faders have been turned into effects controls, then the input fader, or the line fader as it's called, will control the parameter or the sound of that filter LFO. Now, as I was saying, I think of these more as a group. In that, I mean I load these effects as a group. I chose to leave the masher always on, so you always have a beat masher on these controls with fader effects engaged. But you can load different pairs of effects in effect slots 2 and 3. In this case, these two effects are loaded by pressing a single button, which is labeled Echo. It's labeled Echo because the Echo is always available on one knob. You press an echo, you can turn it on, and then you can further mess it up by adding this or this to the mix. So this is a super fader. It turns the wet dry mix up, giving you flanger or whatever effect is in this slot, turns on the other effect, and at the very top will engage the beat masher, the freeze effect.
the VCI 100 has four knobs and three banks of controls, A, B, C, essentially giving you 16 buttons, rather. Each of these buttons can be set up to load a specific effect or a specific combination of effects. This is for deck A, this is for deck B, or conversely deck C or deck D. Now I've set up each of these to load a specific pair of effects. This is set up to control deck C. You can change which effects these pairs actually load anytime by modifying the TSI file which is provided for free for you to try out on djtechtools.com. This button here, Deck D Loop Activate, no longer activates a loop. Instead, it works as a load command. Pressing it once changes the screen to get into your browser window where you can then use the left jog wheel to scroll through a playlist and quickly find the track you want to play. You can then load whatever the selected track is into the right or left deck. That track will load and the screen will return to normal.